In this section, we're going to discuss a special functional notation and see how it can be applied to different models. The notation is that f of x equals y. Notice that we read this f of x. This does not mean f times x. This right here is f of x equals y. Another way of writing this is that f of the input equals the output. So it's important to realize the number inside the parentheses is always the input or the x or the independent variable. And the number on the other side of the equality symbol is always the output. For example, suppose we are working with this linear function, y equals negative 2x plus 5. Another way of writing this is to replace the y with the symbol f of x. So it's really important to understand that the symbol f of x is really means the same thing as a y. Now f is called the name of the function, and you don't always have to use f. Other common symbols would be g and h. Those are by far the three most common symbols to represent a function. But really, any letter could be used. Now let's see how this notation works. Let's say the question asked, asked us to find find f of 4. Well, the number inside the parentheses is the x. So the 4 represents the x. So that means we'll simply substitute 4 in for x in the function. And we could write it out this way. We could say f of 4 equals negative 2 times 4 plus 5. So I've just substituted the 4 in for the x. And then we'll just work out that answer. So that's negative 8 plus 5. So it would be negative 3. Okay, now let's suppose the question said to find x if f of x equals negative 7. Now if it says that f of x equals negative 7, that means we'll substitute the negative 7 in for the f of x, or the y in other words. So that would go in on the left hand side of the equation. So we'd have negative 7 equals negative 2x plus 5. Then we'd have to solve to see what x would need to be. So we'd subtract 5 from both sides, and that's negative 12 equals negative 2x. And then when we divide both sides by negative 2, we would end up with 6 equals x. Now sometimes we're even asked to find something like f of a plus 2. Now in this case, the whole thing that's inside the parentheses, which is the a plus 2, would have to get substituted in where the x is in the function. So the way we'd write that out is we'd say that f of a plus 2 would be negative 2 times a plus 2 plus 5. So we've replaced the x in the original function with whatever's inside the parentheses here. And then once we've done that, we'll just distribute the parentheses out so that we can simplify this. And so that would be negative 2a minus 4 plus 5. And then if we have like terms, we can combine them. So we'd have negative 2a plus 1. And that would be your final answer there. Okay, now let's look at a different function. Let's take the function f of x equals 2x squared plus 3x. Let's say we want to find f of negative 3. Now remember, that means the negative 3, the number inside the parentheses, is the input, or the x. So we'll substitute that in for x. So we would have 2 times negative 3, it's good to put that in parentheses, squared, plus 3 times negative 3. And then we'll just work that out. Um, so negative 3 squared would be 9, so we do that first. And then we'll do the multiplication second. And so we'll have 2 times 9 is 18, plus a negative 9, so minus 9, so our answer would be 9. Alright, now let's see how this functional notation applies to a table of values. Now you can see we're given a table of inputs. The input would be the x and outputs, f of x. Remember, f of x is really just your y values or your outputs. So let's find f of 2. 
Now, remember, the number 2 inside the parentheses is the input. So we look over in the input column and find the number 2 and look at the corresponding output. So the answer would be 10. Now let's find x if f of x is 10. Now the 10 that's given is f of x. So that 10 is the output. So we'd find 10 in the output column and then look back to see what the corresponding input is. So x would equal 2. Now let's find x if f of x is 1. Now again, this 1 that's given to us is the f of x, or the output. So we'll find 1 in the output column. Now it occurs here, but also down here. So we'd have to account for both of those two. So x could either equal 0, or it could equal 4. So there's two possibilities. x equals 0, or x equals 4. Now let's see how this notation works when we have the graph of a function. Now in this case, let's start with f of negative 3. Now the x coordinate right here is negative 3 because that's the input inside parentheses. And so we'd find the x coordinate of negative 3 and then we'd go up to the curve or the line and then see what the corresponding output is and that looks like it's 3. Alright now let's try the next one f of 6. So again the number in parentheses the 6 is the input or the x. So we'd find 6 on the x-axis and then we just want to see what the y-coordinate is there and since that's right on the x-axis at that point it means the y-coordinate is really 0. Okay, now in this problem, we it says find x if f of x equals 4. Now this 4 is f of x. That's the output or the y-coordinate of 4. So we find 4 right here on the y-axis, and then we'll have to kind of go over with a dotted line till we touch the graph and then go down to see what the x coordinate would be and we see that that would be negative 6. So that would be the x. x equals negative 6. And the next example says find x if f of x equals 2. So again this 2 is the output or the y coordinate. So we find 2 on the y-axis and then we have to find the x-coordinate and that would be 0. So x would equal 0. And then in the next one it says find x is if f of x equals 1. So once again the 1 here is the output or the y-coordinate because that's f of x. So we find 1 on the y-axis and then we'll, from that point, go over to touch the graph and see what the x coordinate is there. And it looks like x equals 3. And we talked a little bit before how to find both the x and the y intercepts of a graph. And I just want to um, review this in the context of this new functional notation. So here we have a function given to us, f of x equals 1 third x minus 2. And let's say we want to find both the x and the y intercepts. Now if we want to find the y intercept, remember the process is to let x equal 0. So we're going to let x equal 0. And so we'll substitute, that would mean we're going to do f of 0, which would be we're substituting 0 in for x. So 1 third times 0 minus 2. So that would be 0 minus 2, which comes out to be negative 2. And remember, on intercepts, always give your answer as an ordered pair. 
and we started by letting x equal 0. So x is 0. And then when we solved, we ended up getting um, y equaling negative 2. How do we know that's a y? Because it's f of 0. Remember, that notation always represents an output or a y. So the y is negative 2. And that would be our y-intercept. Now to find the x-intercept, we let y equal 0. Whatever intercept you're trying to find, you let the opposite variable equal 0. So in this case, remember, y is the same as f of x. So that means we're going to let f of x equal 0. This means we're going to substitute a 0 in on the left side of our equation where the f of x appears. So we would have 0 equals 1 third x minus 2. And then we need to solve this for x. So you'd add 2 to both sides first, and that would give us 2 equals 1 third x. And then you would multiply both sides of the equation by 3. And so x would be equal to 6. And again, that should be an ordered pair. What did we start by doing? We let y equal 0. Or in other words, we let f of x equal 0. So y is 0. And when we solved the equation, we got x equals 6. So therefore, the x-coordinate is 6. So the order pair is 6, 0. The last thing I'd like to do in this section is to show how this functional notation applies to a linear model. Now this table shows the percentages of Ford's U.S. market shares in various years from 1998 through 2008. And the, um, the percentages really show you the... Um, the percentage of all U.S. auto sales that were Ford. So in 1998, 26% of all auto sales in the U.S. were Ford. But in 2008, it's gone down to 14%. So Ford's market share has dropped over that period of time. We're going to let T represent the number of years since 1995. And that will be the independent variable. And I'm just going to put an extra column in my table to represent um, that independent variable t. So in 1998, that's three years after 1995. And then we'd have five years, and then seven, and then nine, and then 11, and then 13. Now the outputs are the, are the market share percentages, and that we're going to use our new notation, f of t, to represent those. So that would be like the y value. Now let's start by finding a linear model for this data. And remember the method that we learned is that we can find two points on the, um, from the data, and use those two points to create the equation of a straight line. And I'm just going to pick the very first point, which is the ordered pair 3, 26. And I'm going to also use... I think I'm not going to use the last point, but the second to last one. So that would be 11, 15. Now the reason I didn't pick the very last one, in case you're interested, is that notice if I'm looking at how far these went down um, over these two-year spans, it went down 3, and then 3, and then 2, and then 3. But this last year it only went down 1. So it's a little bit of an unusual year. So I went with the second to last one, which seemed to be a little more typical, and it will fit the points a little closer. Um, remember, you're allowed to pick any two points that would give you a line that 
closely fits the data. So let's find the slope. So the slope would be, remember we take y2 minus y1, so 15 minus 26, and divide that by x2 minus x1, so 11 minus 3. And I'm, I've punched that into my calculator since we're going to want a decimal for that anyway. And it came out to be negative 1.375. And then once we get that slope, we just have to use that slope along with one of the two given points. I think I'll just pick this first one. Either one would work. So I'll use that first given point along with the slope. And I can write down point slope form. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So that will give me y minus 26 equals negative 1.375 times x minus 3. And then we distribute this out. So y minus 26 equals negative 1.375x and then be plus 4.125 and then to solve for y we'd add 26 to both sides of the equ equation so we'd get y equals negative 1.375 x plus 30.125 Now I did that computation using an x and a y, but in our case, our x, if you look in our table here, is really t. So this x really should be a t. And our y, our output, is really f of t. So this y, we should really write as an f of t. So we can use that notation. And so that would give us our final answer, which would be f of t equals negative 1.375t plus 30.125. Now once we've generated this model, we can use it to make predictions. For example, suppose we wanted to estimate Ford's market share in the year 2010. Now first, year 2010 would correspond to t equaling 15 because that's 15 years after 1995. So what we'd really need to do here is evaluate f of 15. Meaning when when the input is 15 years after 1995 we want to find out what the output is. And so that just amounts to substituting a 15 in for t into our model. So it would be negative 1.375 times 15 plus 30.125. And that comes out to equal 9.5. And that would be percent. Now, let's estimate in what year Ford's market share was 17%. Now this 17% is the output that's being given to us. So that means f of t equals 17. So in our equation, notice f of t is on the left side of the equation. That means we'll have to substitute 17 in on the left side of the equation. So 17 equals negative 1.375t plus 30.125. And then we need to do the algebra to solve this for t. So we'd first subtract the 30.125 from both sides of the equation. And that would give us negative 13.125 equals negative 1.375t. 
and then we divide both sides by negative 1.375. And when we divide that out, we'd have to round it a little, but it comes out to be about 9.5. So that's T. So that means it'll happen 9.5 years after 1995. Now that comes out to be 2004.5. So, we'd have to say during 2004, because it's um, somewhere past the beginning of 2004. So, during the year 2004. Next, I'd like to find and interpret the intercepts of this um, linear model. So remember, the way we find intercepts is we substitute a zero in for one variable and then solve for the other. So let's start by substituting a zero in for t. So if we let t equal zero, and we plug that into our equation, that will give us f of zero equals negative 1.375 times zero plus 30 point one two five and of course any number times zero is still zero so that answer just comes out to be thirty point one two five um, the ordered pair there would be that the t which is like our x is zero and the output is thirty point one two five and we'd like to be able to interpret that now remember t equaling 0 in this problem really represents 1995. And this output is always giving us the percentage of market share. So we'd want to say that for interpret, interpreting this, we'd say in 1995, Ford's market share was 30.125%. Now, whenever you're finding intercepts, make sure they're, they seem reasonable. In this case, 1995 is only three years prior to the first data point that was in our table. So it's not too far outside the given range of data. It is an extrapolation, so it's a little riskier, but since it's fairly close to the, the data range, that's probably a fairly good estimate for 1995. Okay, now let's do it the other way around. Let's let f of t equal 0, meaning we're letting the output equal 0 now. So that would mean we're going to substitute a 0 in for f of t on the left side of our equation. That will give us 0 equals negative 1.375t plus 30.125. And then we'd have to solve for t, so subtract 30.125 from both sides. And that gives us negative 30.125 equals negative 1.375t and then divide both sides by negative 1.375 and we would get approximately 21.9 equals t. So let's see if we can interpret this. Now remember the t always rep represents the number of years after 1995 and so that's roughly 22 21.9 let's say we were to round that off to t equal 22 so that means 22 years after 1995 
And that comes out to the year 2017. And the other part of this equation is that we started out by representing um, or by letting f of t equal 0. Now remember, f of t represents the output, which is the market share. So when we say f of t equals 0, we're saying that Ford's market share equals 0. So really what this intercept is telling you is that in the year 2017, Ford's market share would be 0. Now this might not make sense, um, even, even though Ford's market share has been decreasing, unless they go completely out of business, they're going to sell some cars in 2017. And remember, 2017 is quite a ways past the last data point, so this again is extrapolation, and it's pretty far away from the given data, so it's a pretty risky result, and it may not be very reliable. The last thing I'd like to do is show how to find the domain and range of a model. Now the domain always corresponds to the input and in our case the input is the variable t. So we want to try to think um, in this situation what kind of values can t be and, and still make sense in this problem. And so for the domain really the smallest t could be would be zero. And that represents the starting point of the problem. And the biggest t can be would be 22. Now the reason we know this is because once we get past 22, the model starts showing that the um, market share is negative, and that's impossible and wouldn't make sense in this problem. So we'll limit time to be between 0 and 22. And as far as the range goes, that's always corresponding to the output. That's f of t in this case. And that stands for the market share. And so we, again, we want to think realistically what's the smallest the market share could be and what's the biggest it could be. And that would be the range. So the smallest it could be would be 0% because you can't have a negative um, market share. That doesn't even make sense. So the smallest it could be would be zero. And in order for that even to happen, it means Ford would have to go out of business, which isn't likely. But it, I guess it's possible. So that's the smallest it could be would be zero. And the biggest that can be over this time period is 30.125. And the reason we know this is because if we look at our equation, when time is zero, right at the starting point, the output would equal 30.125. So that's the biggest it could be.